my uh, message uh, this morning about the work of the Holy Spirit. Good morning, brethren. <laughs> Open your Bible on John chapter 14, verse 15 to 27, and John chapter 16, verse 5 to 15. My introduction. The Holy Spirit is a divine personality who has a definite function in the world. A study of the scripture reveals that the Holy Spirit has been very active. His activity has been shown in regard to the universe and the people on the earth. Since Pentecost, his ministry has changed somewhat with regard to believers. In the Old Testament, the Spirit had a come and go ministry. At Pentecost, he came to indwell believers and abide in the living church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Judge chapter 6, verse 34, but the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, came. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14, but the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, departed. Judge chapter 11, verse 29, then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah. In Psalm chapter 51, verse 11, David said, do not reject me, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. In John chapter 14, verse 16, it says here, our Lord Jesus said, I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. Who is the Holy Spirit? No. God, the Holy Spirit, is the third person in the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is a person, not an it or forced. God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, is the first person. While God the Son, Jesus Christ, who came and died for our sins and rose from the dead, is the second person. Although there are three separate persons, they are one. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, 6, verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our Lord, the Lord our God is one Lord. So there is only one God. The Holy Spirit has several titles. Emphasizing His infinite holiness. Paraklete, Greek word. John chapter 14 verse 16 is translated as variously as counselor, comforter, helper. It refers to someone called in to help. The spirit of truth. In essence and in truth, the spirit is characterized by truth. He brings people to the truth of God. He always points people to Jesus Christ our Lord who is the embodiment of truth. John chapter 14, verse 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to their Father except through me. In relation to the scripture, the Holy Spirit is the author of the scripture. In 1 Peter, I know, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, 21, it says here, above all, you do well if you recognize this. No prophecy of scripture ever comes about by the, by the prophet's own imagination. For no prophecy was ever born of human impulse. Rather, man carried along by the spirit spoke from God. The Spirit, Holy Spirit is also the interpreter <clears throat> of the scripture. 
John chapter 16, verse 14. It says here, Our Lord Jesus said, He will glorify me, or he will take from what is mine and will declare it to you. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Oh, how faithful the Holy Spirit has been in my own life to bring back to my memories verses of scriptures in the hour of need, particularly answering difficult questions. Where is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit lives with us, meaning in us, and will be with us forever. In 17, verse 17, it says, Some of his disciples therefore said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while and you won't see me. And again, a little while and you will see me. And because I go to the Father. And in 16, it says, A while, a little while and you will no longer see me again. A little while and you will see me. This contrasts with the situation in the Old Testament when the Holy Spirit came upon certain people for certain periods only after which he lives. You remember Samson, a strong man? Although Jesus puts it another way, if anyone loves God and obeys his teaching, God will come to him and make his home within let's see in verse 23 it says here and in that day you will ask another not we will ask nothing of me truly truly i'll tell you whatever you may ask of my fa of the father in my name he will give it to you think of the implication of this god making his home right inside us brethren Friends, oh how God love us. The work of the Holy Spirit in relation to the believer to indwell every believer. The counsel, help, and comfort To reveal Christ through the world, teach all things, remind the disciples of all of everything our Lord Jesus has said. Your disciples will not only be aided by the Spirit in recalling all that Jesus has said, but they will also receive the Spirit's own interpretation. This is crucial for the life of the church and for the writing of the New Testament. Grant peace. John 14, verse 20, 27. For the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from God. He, our Lord Jesus Christ said, who guide into all truth. Aside from guiding us into all truth, the Holy Spirit also guides us in our everyday life. He gives us wisdom and understanding. So we will know the will of God in a particular situation. At other times, He gives us an impression that grows into conviction as we weigh our option. To bring glory to Jesus. Verse 14. And it says, Our Lord Jesus said, He will glorify me, or He will take from what is mine and will declare it to you. Uh, 
think of how wonderful it is for the Holy Spirit to do all this for us, brethren, friends. The work of the Holy Spirit in relation to the world. To convict the world of guilt in regards to sin. He 16 verse 8, 9. When he has come, he will convict the world about sin and about righteousness and about judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me. Apart from the Spirit's convicting work, people do not see themselves as sinners to convict the world of guilt in regard to righteousness. In verse 10, it says about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you won't see me anymore. The righteousness brought about by Christ's sacrificial death. No one but the Holy Spirit can reveal to a person that a righteousness, that a righteous status before God does not depend on good works only, but on Christ's death on the cross. How can we experience the Holy Spirit? Some of us are walking closely with the Holy Spirit, but some others among us feel far from Him, although the Holy Spirit lives right within. So why is it that we sometimes feel far from the Holy Spirit, even though He's already in us? How then can we experience the presence of the Holy Spirit? We should want, want to walk with Him, a relationship with love. A relationship starts with right expectations and right attitude. We should want to walk with Him, with the Holy Spirit, in a relationship of love. Otherwise, the relationship will not prosper. Be thankful and open to Him, and be ready to taught by Him who is our teacher. As we go through life, we will encounter difficult circumstances and trials. Instead of grumbling and complaining to God, we should, add the, we should ask the Holy Spirit to teach us what He wants us to learn through these difficult circumstances and trials. God is in control of our lives, and He has a purpose for everything we encounter. We should yield to Him, meaning obey Him. The Holy Spirit has a mind and feelings. When we do things that are contrary to His nature, He is grieved. When we obey, He is glad. When we ask Him for guidance, he is more than willing to do so. Example of how we grieve the Holy Spirit. Eating food that harm our body and not exercising. Remember, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16, I Chapter 6, verse 19. So we should take good care of our body. Entertaining last thoughts. Lastful thoughts. We see billboards or magazines or movie 
video showing sexually stimulating sin, we begin to have lustful thoughts. The Holy Spirit says to us, reject, reject those thoughts. But we continue to entertain those lustful thoughts. So the Holy, the Holy Spirit, grieve, brethren. Worrying, worrying. We meet difficult circumstances. We start to worry. God says to us, trust me. I have a purpose for what, for what you are going through. But we continue to worry. The Holy Spirit is grieved. Losing our temper. Someone says something that hurt us. We begin to feel hungry, ang angry. God tells us, keep cool. Withdraw for a while until your anger is over. Then you can discuss it rationally. But we refuse and continue to let the anger build up, then explode. The Holy Spirit is grieved. Feeling proud. Someone praises us. We begin to feel proud. God tells us, don't be proud. I was the one who gave you the ability to do, to do, do, to do it. Yet we continue to let our ego be bloated. The Holy Spirit is grieved. Feeling resentful when corrected. You did or said something wrong. Someone corrects you. You resent being correction. But you continue to feel resentful. The Holy Spirit is grieved. Unforgiveness. Someone hurt you. It was very painful. The heart stays with you for a long time and become bitterness. God says, forgive. You refuse. God says again, forgive that person. You refuse again. So the Holy Spirit is grieved. Realize that we are dead to sin. Victory over sin. Sometimes our emotions seems to force us towards sin. The key to victory here is choosing to think, right thinking, is realizing that believers in Christ are dead to sin. And the sin nature no longer holds power over them. Then realize that we do not have to sin. Be still before God. Many of us are busy running around. We feel pressured, tense, anxious. When we quiet ourselves and become still in the presence of God, the still small voice of God is fixed to us in our heart. Our perspective in life changes. We become more concerned with what God is concerned about instead of our own. We feel secure in Him and trust Him. The anxiety is gone. We become more conscious of God's presence in our life. And we ask God, how he wants us to fit into his plans instead of asking God to fulfill our plans. My conclusion, brethren. We are blessed to have the Holy Spirit 
live right within us. He would like to teach us and he would like to teach us and guide us and help us. Let us submit ourselves to him, to him, and listen to him, brethren. Please listen to him. Then we can experience his presence in our life. Brethren and friends, if you are not a true Christian at this time, our Lord Jesus Christ invite us to believe and obey his gospel and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sin. Please obey the gospel so that you will be a Christian, true Christian and one of the family of God. Thank you and God bless.